I've been racing Hyperline for over four years now, and I figured out something quite absurd in that time. The fact that racing Hyperline actually made me better at working and made me more productive. Now, here is exactly how I was able to do that. Now, before I actually show you how I went about doing that, there's a little concept that's pretty simple that you need to understand first, okay? And it's called feedback loops. So a feedback loop, feedback loop is a phenomenon but basically, the cause gives rise to the effect, which in turn feeds back into the cause to give more of the effect, okay? So if I just draw this as a quick diagram, let's say this is the cause, okay? We'll call this square as the cause, and we'll call this circle as the effect. Now, the cause is naturally going to give rise to the effect, right? If you drink water, let's say you were thirsty. If you drink water, you're not going to be thirsty anymore. So the cause of you drinking water was your thirst, the effect of you having drank that water is going to be you no longer being thirsty. Now, that, that is a simple example of cause and effect. You can take cause and effect to be literally anything else. Let's say you wanted the ball to move from point A to point B, you kick the ball with your foot, and then the ball moves from point A to point B because you kicked it, cause and effect. Now, where this feedback loop phenomenon originates is when the effect feeds back into the cause. So the effect is going to feed back into the cause like so, which creates a feedback loop like the one that you see over here. Now, what exactly is happening and how are we going to take a practical example for this? Well, let's say that we have a window, okay? So this is a window and here you're standing at this window and you're trying to look inside this window, looking at what, whatever's going on, whether it be inside of a shop's window or probably some other window, okay? Let's just say this is a window and you're trying to look into it, trying to see what's on the other side. This is the cause. So you looking into the window is the cause. Now, the effect of this is another person standing right next to you and also attempting to look inside of the window. Great. Now, this effect feeds back into the cause, which means that now there are two people standing and looking inside of the window, which means two more people join as a result because what happened was a doubling. So from one, we went to two, and from two, we're going to go to four. So after that, the cause of two people trying to look inside the window is two more people trying to look inside the window. And the cause of four people in total trying to look inside the window is going to be, you guessed it, four more people trying to look inside the window. So basically, the cause gives rise to the effect, which gives rise to more of the cause, which creates an infinite feed feedback loop, which is also known as a flywheel. So this creates a flywheel where just more and more and more people try and line up in front of the window in order to see what's going on. This also leads into exponential behavior like so. So what happens? Let's say this is time. Okay, if you consider this to be time and if you consider this to be the number of people, what's going to happen is as time goes on, the number of people increases exponentially. So it's not linear as in it's not going like this. Okay, it's not as, as though, let's say these were intervals of time. Okay, with every interval of time, it's not like the number of people are just increasing constantly. It's there are really less number of people for quite some time until a certain threshold is hit until a point of critical mass is hit, but basically the number of people just skyrockets and goes exponential like you see here. So first of all, it's just going to be one person, then it goes from one to two, two to four, four to eight, eight to 16, then 32, 64, 128, so on and so forth. That's how this works. So this is the basic idea of feedback loops. Now, what I'm going to do in order to illustrate the fact that Hyperland is quite good at making you a more productive person and basically good at making you more money is a flowchart. So this flowchart is something that I came up with in order to perfectly illustrate the point that I'm trying to make here, okay? So we start off with an unriced environment. You can probably chalk this up to any env environment that just appears by default, whether it be Hyperland with absolutely no customization whatsoever, you just have Hyperchance wallpaper as your background, right? You either have that or hell, even you don't, you probably don't even have that, or on Gnome where it's just another plain wallpaper or on KDE, okay? So that most likely you're going to be starting off with an unriced environment if you haven't yet been introduced to rising and whatnot. Now that leads into you rising. So you actually coming across the r slash Unix porn subreddit was perhaps the catalyst in order for you to take up rising. Okay. In order for you to learn how to make beautiful setups like this one, where basically all you have to do is just choose between a list of different themes and customize your setup to look exactly as you want being able to switch themes at the press of a simple button. And by the way, if you want to learn how to make something like this yourself, 
I teach you exactly how to do this in the program, which is the first link in the description. So you can go ahead and check that out. In fact, this is exactly what you learn inside of Hyper Accelerator, which is a program. So inside of this module called Team Switchers, this is exactly what I show you. So right now the video just doesn't seem to be loading, but it's a two hour long module where I cover what theme switchers are, the different kinds, how to set up wallpaper based and custom theme switching, which is what you see here. I also teach you how you can change the wallpaper depending on whichever wallpaper you want. So if you do choose a custom theme, something like Tokyo Night, let's say, okay, you can magically change the wallpaper to anyone using this really fantastic looking slick transition. So if you want to learn how to make something like this yourself, you can go ahead and click the first link in the description. But yes, now back to what I was saying, you come across the r slash Unix point subreddit and you get introduced to the world of rising. So you start changing your wallpapers, you start changing colors of your desktop, whether it be on GNOME or KDE or wherever else, whether it be XFCE too, right? So you go about changing your terminal colors and then your app launcher, you figure out a way to get different app launchers, so on and so forth. So you basically delve into the rising rabbit hole, right? Now that leads you to making uh, an environment that is aesthetic and comfortable. Okay, so Rising gives you an aesthetic and comfortable environment, which as you can see, this environment is pretty damn comfy. I spent quite a long time just configuring and tweaking the variables just right in order to make it look as fantastic as this. But once I finally did that, I was able to create an environment that truly made me feel at home because take a look at this wallpaper, okay? I've used this wallpaper for about a month and a half and Truly, even when I switch to it after so long, I genuinely do feel like I'm just returning back home. This wallpaper along with this one as well. The original wallpaper that I had, which is this cafe. So this wallpaper, if you have been watching my channel for quite some time, you will know that this is the wallpaper I had for probably a month and a half as well. So what I'm trying to say here is, Rising leads you to make uh, an environment for yourself which is aesthetic and comfortable. Great, now what does that do? that makes you want to work more, okay? Now, chances are, let's say you configure your house, okay? Configure is, I guess we can go with that word, okay? Let's say you change the paint on the walls of your house to be a color that you like more, okay? And you just set up your house in such a way that you actually like spending time in the house, so you just naturally end up spending more time in the house. Now, your desktop is basically your digital house, right? So if you make your digital home aesthetic and comfortable, if you make that environment aesthetic and comfortable, chances are you're going to want to work more. This is almost a certainty, right? You don't even need anybody to explain how exactly this works because you've probably experienced it firsthand. There have been environments in which you felt truly and utterly comfortable, in which you genuinely wanted to stay more. And so if you did any sort of activity associated with that particular place, then chances are anytime you return to that place, you're going to perform that activity whether it be working in a certain corner, whether it be just working in your office, right? If you're used to already working there, or whether it be reading in your reading corner, if you have one, just something like that, right? As soon as you go to an environment, you just get set in a certain state of mind and in a certain mode. And that mode, if you have an environment like this one, is basically one where you want to work more. Great. And wanting to work more gives you better productivity. Now, if you notice this arrow, it is actually double edged, like it's double sided. So. Better productivity means that you want to work more, which means you get better productivity. So that's what I'm trying to say by this is such an epic feedback loop and such an epic flywheel. So we not only have a flow, right? A flow of cause and effect that goes in one direction. We also have the flow of cause and effect just infinitely feeding into itself within the flow of cause and effect, like within the rest of this flowchart. So Wanting to work more gives you better productivity, which means that you want to work more. And not just that, but wanting to work more gives you productivity this way as well. Not just directly, but also like so, like with this line. And not just that, but then an aesthetic and comfortable environment makes you, you guessed it, just get better productivity. So you not only have two or three, you actually have three different arrows pointing to better productivity alone, right? And that's not considering the other stuff that the arrows point to. So that is one major reason why Rising is just completely overpowered. Now let, let's continue further, okay? Wanting to work more means that you get more done. So better productivity means that you get more done. And if you get more done, that's an inspiration and motivation, a reason for you to do more, which means that you get better productivity, which means that you get more done, which means that the cycle repeats on and on and on forever, okay? Now, 
if we take this little parallelogram here, if you want to work more, you get more done. And if you get more done, which that gives you better productivity. If you get better productivity, it means that you want to work more. And this just goes on and on. And not just that, but the aesthetic and comfortable environment that you have created for yourself right here, right? What that does, hold on, we'll just switch back. There we go. Now, what this does for you is also going to get you more done. This environment is helping you get more done in terms of work. The wanting to work more itself is getting you more done. Okay, better productivity is getting you more done. And there is, <laughs> there are so many flywheels and different feedback loops going on over here. It's, it's insane. It's, it's practically absurd, which is why when I figured this out, I was, I was genuinely, I was taken aback. I was so flabbergasted by just learning of the existence of something like this. When I finally figured it out, I was like, oh, so that's why it makes sense. So everything just clicked. The reason why I felt so much more productive when I was using a setup that actually made happy, that, that actually made me happy, right? It, it, it all just clicked. It's kind of like the dots just connected. And that is what pricing gets you. And not just that, but because you get more done, you get a promotion at your work, right? And because you get that promotion, it means that you get more done because you're even more motivated. And guess what? At the end of all this, at the end of rising, you probably would have never seen it coming, but the end of it is because you're motivated to work harder because of the promotion, you make more money. And because you make more money, you're even more motivated to get another promotion, which makes you even more money. So we went from an unriced environment through rising to literally making more money. And that is how Rising Hyperland will literally make you better at work. If you think about it, this is pretty much indisputable. You might say some nerdy stuff like correlation does not equal causation, so on and so forth, blah, blah, blah. What does it matter? Okay. Does it really matter? It's like trying to, it's like trying to figure out why the laws of the universe exist. Okay. We figured out that there are certain laws that, certain natural laws, right? We know that there's laws of cause and effect. Okay. We know Newton's laws. We know that they exist, okay? But it's like trying to ask why the laws exist in the first place. It's, isn't that kind of pointless? Maybe it has some point, okay, to a certain extent, but it just doesn't make sense. It would take way too long for us to figure out why the, this stuff exists in the first place. And not just that, but then how would it even help us? What I'm personally most concerned with is just figuring out stuff like this and using it to my own benefit, not giving a crap about whether it actually, how it actually works or why it even does. Now, in this case, it actually is pretty simple. It's just environmental psychology, which facilitates this entire thing. But in terms of the bigger questions, right? I suppose that's just left, best left unanswered in terms of why the natural laws exist and whatnot. Bit of a tangent, but regardless, I had to make sure to tell you that in order to make a contrast with this. And basically, that's it. That is how pricing can take you from a person who really doesn't like working and who doesn't really enjoy their setup to a person who's literally making more money from it than ever before and liking their setup and actually liking their life as they're working. Because your desktop is basically your digital home. And if you're going to customize your home, if you're going to set it up in just the way in which it's perfect, if you have certain plants kept at certain corners and areas of your home, if you customize your desk, why not just do it for your desktop as well? Right? That's what I wanted to say in this video. If you want to learn how to make a custom theme switcher like this one, where you can choose between a bunch of different wallpapers and of course, between a bunch of different themes like this one, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and I'd love to help you out. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Stay rising. Mwah.